create um, these different posters. And then we'll also go through some design and graphic elements as well as good and bad poster examples too. Um, and then you can do some poster practice too if you have time to do that. All right, so I do want to mention that we do have a poster competition coming up. It's going to be on the 22nd. We'll have judges there um, in person to judge this. Um, and then anyone who submits and wins from that poster competition, we can send on to APHA, and then they may be accepted. If they're accepted, they get $500 from us to go to APHA, because we understand it is very expensive to go there. Um, and they will also get $500 award from National Delta Omega as well. Uh, so we have a 250 word abstract um, and a poster in a PowerPoint setting so that you can present it easily to the judges. So what should you include in a poster? Um, there are a number of different elements that we'll go through. Um, so the important information will be the main points, title, graphs, those should all be readable about 10 feet away. The word count is going to be about 300 to 800 words total, so that you're not including too much information on there. The text should be clear, uh, so try to limit jargon, uh, medical jargon. In the past with posters, I think everyone just sort of clustered medical jargon everywhere, but it's better if we don't do that, that way more individuals can understand it. You're going to use bullet points, numbering, headings, and subheadings to try to differentiate the sections and make it really easy to see. And then you have a clean layout using boxes and trying to make use of the white space that you have on the board or the background space. Some other key elements, um, you want to have a descriptive and interesting title. Um, you know, when I do qualitative research, I often use a quote from participants to make it a little bit more relevant um, and relatable. Uh, you have your author names and affiliations right up here. You're going to sometimes include the abstract, depending on what's required for that different uh, specific organization. Um, an introduction, which includes sort of why this is important, what's the background literature on this. You can have your materials and methods section, results, discussion, references, and then acknowledgments if you have you know, a mentor that you need to thank or a funding source or something. Um, you're going to want to include appropriate graphics, tables, and figures throughout. So it depends on how that layout's going to look. There are a lot of different types of layouts. But this is the main idea of what you should have. Uh, again, your results is going to be probably the longest part, is because especially it's going to have graphs and tables and charts too. All right, so an in-depth look at each section. The abstract is going to provide a full uh, sort of condensed version of um, the abstract that you might have submitted to the, to the conference to get accepted. The introduction is going to be about a medium paragraph, approximately five to seven sentences long. It'll include that background, gaps that you've identified in the literature that you're planning to fill in through your research, and then the purpose and aim of the project, the very clear purpose statement um, and very clear hypotheses. Uh, you're going to have your methods, which include participants, any recruitment you did, as well as measures. Your IRB should also be in that section. Um, and then results, including demographics or descriptives, your main results uh, according to your like, main hypothesis, as well as any secondary results if you have a sensitivity analysis or a secondary exploratory aim. Um, your discussion is going to put the findings from that uh, research into context, and then your references and acknowledgments, and just make sure that if there are any stipulations on references, so if they have to be APA or AMA style, um, that you're keeping that in mind. And please let me know if you have any questions throughout too. Um, there are a few free options. I want to only highlight the free options because I know students don't have unlimited funds, and it's there are a lot of really good free options too. So PowerPoint is the one that's used most typically. Uh, it can be um, used with what Microsoft Word or Google Slides as well. There are some available templates that they have on there, or you can create your own using sort of boxes and inserting graphics. Um, there's a lot of different color elements you can provide to this too, but it does have some limitations with the templates that it has. Slides Go is another really good option. Um, they have a free sign up. 
and you can have, there are multiple different template options based on the search poster. I've linked that search there and I'm happy to share the slides too. So you can go on and see, this is just one example um, of a, a slide, uh, like sort of poster demonstration they have. It's easy to fill out. And then Canva uh, has some templates available. I will say that SlidesGo has maybe a little bit more academic uh, templates, but they do have um, some templates available. These might be more for a educational poster than an academic poster for a conference, but they still have some good options. And then uh, design, when we're thinking about overall format, um, how is this gonna look? What I like to do with trying to design a poster is you do thumbnail sketching first. So you draw it out and you draw it out a couple of different options. You may know, hey, I need to include one figure in one table. And so you think about where that's going to be. You've got your text, you've got your just different figures and tables and you can label those. Um, and then you wanna also think about the requirements for a vertical um, poster or horizontal poster. Most are horizontal posters, but I have had a couple of different instances where they've been vertical and I found out the week before. That's not something you wanna find out. Um, so really check requirements and lay it out according to either that vertical or horizontal format. Um, you have three to four columns with a title at the top or at the side, depending on your preference. Um, but those columns really help the reader follow the format that you're, and follow the discussion. You want to map out the text and graphics in advance too. It's, it's something where some people prefer to just put everything into it once you get there. But I think this is really helpful for planning out what it's going to look like. Orientation, um, as I mentioned, that, that horizontal or landscape is more common than portrait. But look at all the requirements before starting, because it's very difficult um, to take this and put it into a vertical format. If you can imagine, everything looks different on a horizontal format, and it can be very um, challenging to change it, especially the last minute. So you might need to also adapt tables or figures. Um, make sure figures are high resolution. I'm gonna move this so that we can see everything there. Um, at least 300 DPI, and that's something you can check on um, in the, the specifics of that file. People use these graphics to try and reinforce the message that they're conveying and try to incorporate a variety of figures if possible. So tables, charts or graphs, figures or pictures. Um, those can help bring attention to the poster and maintain that attention. And then you wanna have 20 point font for tables, which are gonna be readable at about two to three feet away. And you're thinking of someone maybe passing by the poster and they wanna be able to see something and go in maybe a little bit closer, but still be able to visibly see it. I've seen a lot of posters where the text is just too small and you can't really attend to it. Figures can be images. Um, for example, in that uh, A, it's a weather, weather map. Uh, they can be maps. They can also be flow charts, as you see in C, if that's a flow chart of showing the process of something. They can also be photographs. Um, bar graphs, so line graphs, and diagrams as well. So think about what's helpful for you to show um, and how is the, like, what's the best way to illustrate that. Um, some graphic tips, uh, you wanna use vector images. So, you know, .ai, .eps, .svg, some PDF will work well too, whenever possible, instead of the raster images, which are the PNG, JPEG, uh, GIF and TIFF. And so this is the difference between a raster image uh, versus a vector image. They're gonna be much clearer when they print out. Um, you can also check out Creative Commons or other free sources for images. Uh, they have high quality images too. You wanna to have about 60% of your poster be text and about 40% be graphics. So really think about how that's going to look. And then some poster examples. So um, and this turned out a little bit 
busy, but I just want you to look over at the overall format of this. What's good and what would you change? I know you can't necessarily read the text, but just look at the overall format and the text to um, graphic ratio. Yeah, that's, so that's what I was going to say. There's like a lot of text there. And yeah. it's, it looks like it's probably small text as well, so people wouldn't be able to read it. Yeah, they would have to go in real close to read it. Yeah, and then it looks like, too, I don't know if this is normal, but like even towards the conclusion part, mm -hmm. it looks like there's still a lot of figures and like text and everything like that. So, I'm so sorry. Maybe they could, I don't know, I just feel like maybe they could bring those in maybe closer to wherever they're relevant. Yeah. It's like they're leaving off with pictures. And it's like, oh. Exactly. So they they could have interspersed these pictures throughout. Instead, it's sort of, they get to the end of their point, and now they're just putting a whole bunch of pictures in here. So again, we can't quite read the text on here, but just look at the overall layout. And what does that do? Um, it's going to be, this text is going to be very small, very difficult to read. And so you're going to have to come in very close to read it. You do see at the top, this is pretty typical, that they have their affiliations, you know, maybe their logos up there um, flanking either side. Um, what's good about it? What do you like about this? I know, again, you can't see the text, but the overall just appearance. I mean, they at least did include pictures. They did include pictures. Yeah, so there's figures there. It's not just all text. Yeah. Um, and I would also say the text is like neatly demarcated, even though there's mm -hmm. a lot of it. It's very boxy and like you can see where each section is yeah. very clearly. You can see where the sections are. They do have three columns. They have a demarcated line for um, the title at the top. And so it's clear in terms of that, but there's just too much information overall. I right, want to look at another example. Um, this is another example. This is a vertical format. Again, that can be vertical um, uh, in the portrait uh, format or horizontal in a landscape format. So always check those requirements. Um, we see that you know there are some different boxes here. So what's good about this, or what would you change? It's left. There's less text. Mm -hmm. There's less text. Yeah, and so we want to have about 60% text to about 40% um, graphics. Do you think it meets this? Kind of. Like, even without the graphics, there's also white space, mm -hmm. which doesn't make it too crowded for the eyes. It's Exactly. So that, that use of white space and the use of the background, the boxes help to bring your attention to the pictures and to the text. Um, so it's not too crowded. Um, and so we've got a lot of different things that are going well with this. One of the things that I think is a little confusing is we've got introduction methods, then we've got discussion here, and we've got the results here and the references here. Think about how we typically read from like left to right. That can be a little challenging um, because you expect the references and discussion to be over here. So just think about the logical order of something because if someone comes up to look at this poster, they're going to be expecting a specific layout. Mm -hmm. um, and if you deviate from that layout, sometimes it could be interesting, but it can also confuse the individual. What else would you say is good or bad about this? There's pattern print, insert bullets, which is similar to the other. I mean, in posters, because it feels like reading. Yes. Yeah. So there are paragraphs instead of bullets or you know little snapshots of text, which can be you know people are passing by a lot of posters. They're not going to sit there and read everything. They want to be able to look at a few bullets to understand the point. You know, if they want to stand there and read it in its entirety, that's fine, but it will be very hard to get the idea of it by the paragraph types text. I would also say maybe the pictures could have been enhanced a little mm -hmm. bit for like better interpretability if it's going on a poster. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So those pictures may need to be enhanced. Um, you know, this one at the bottom may need to be a little bit bigger again in order to be able to see it. Clearly. Yeah. Right. What about this one? What's good or what would you change? 
It's really fancy. I mean, yeah. it's different. Yeah. It's unique kind of competition. Yeah, it's unique. And so again, posters can be different formats. It's not what we typically see, but you know, what what are your thoughts on this? Does this work? I think it works. I think I think you take a risk when you try to be a little too creative and to like to look at some data as a heading title. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. But I mean it it doesn't I wouldn't say it's a bad poster, just a bit unconventional. Yeah, it's more unconventional. And so you gain some things and you lose some things with that. You might grab attention. Um, someone might be able to understand the point of this very quickly, but you may lose, you know, some of the information that you need to convey, or some people may not like that format, and that may turn them away from reading further about it. What other thoughts on this? I really like because the center is says something with species identification, so probably something with spiders or insects. So it has this blue thing. I think the layout is really, is really good. And mm -hmm. also instead of having text, the person has used um, the map yeah. um, to talk about your different distribution. So I think it's really nice. I just don't like that it's completely black. Yeah. It's hard to, if it were some other, I'm, I'm not the best with understanding the color patterns as such, but then for me, it's hard to read because it's very black. And then again, instead of black and white, there's also some text in yellow. Yes. Which yeah. makes it hard to read. Absolutely. So those are really good things to point out. The the very light text on a dark background can be very difficult to read, especially for any individuals who may have some visual impairments. So we really need to think about that. There could have been a different background that might have helped pop that text a little bit more, but also be easier to read. So really think about that. The centrality of like an image, um, a figure can be very powerful and can be very helpful to, um, to bring that reader in and look at that. Um, again, some other poster designs. This is a very different approach, but it's another example of a poster. This may be more for like an educational uh, example, but how, what are, what are the thoughts about this? There are multiple ways to create a poster. I'm not saying this is the best way to create a poster. <laughs> I'm just saying there are lots of different ways. So I want you to think outside the box sometimes, but also keep in mind convention. It looks pretty. It looks I just pretty. don't know that I like it. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's just like the the. I don't, this is probably gonna sound sound proper, but the like it's off kilter. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the it's slanted, and that's just I don't like that. No, that's very. That's a good point. People have expectations when they come to um, posters, and they they people people like symmetry too. And so thinking about how things line up, it's off kilter. How does this change, um, you know, people's perceptions of the poster? But again, I just want you to realize that there are a lot of different ways to do a poster, um, especially depending on who you're presenting to. If you're presenting to educators, if you're presenting to students, if you're presenting to a nonprofit, um, there are different ways that might appeal to different audiences. So really think about who your audience is. APHA, this may not be exactly what you want to do. So um, again, when, when you start creating your poster, I want you to begin with that thumbnail sketch. Um, and again, I'll just sort of go back so you can see what that looks like. So begin with your thumbnail sketch. Where is everyone, everything going to go? Where does the text go? Where do the graphics go? Um, and then just sort of start filling in the different areas. You know, if you've got a paper that you've already started writing, you can bring, you know, little pieces from that and say, okay, what's the most important things I need to take from that? If you submit an abstract to a conference, it's, it's fairly easy then to be able to like, okay, well, background, you know, I had two sentences there. I'm going to pull that out and expand it into, you know, the background of the section. I've highlighted the main results. How do I want to illustrate these main results? Is it going to be through a figure? Is it going to be through a graph? Um, how can I design this poster to look as 
professional as possible um, and really gain attention and have someone want to read through it. So I will now take any questions that you might have about posters, um, about the development of posters, about a poster competition, whatever might be helpful for you all. I can turn off the recording if you prefer. I'll turn off the recording just so we can, um, <laughs> let's see, stop share. And then...